Hey animators, this video is a quick start for our BH Wave It. It's going to look at the very basic function so you can get working with it right away. Uh, I've already got the UI up here, but I'm just going to close that and just, just show you. You just put the, the mail file in your scripts folder, in your, your Maya preferences folder, like any other script, and then you just type down here BH underscore wave, small w, and then it, small i, or sorry, capital I for the it, and then semicolon. And that's it. And then you can add that to a shelf. I'll, I'll add a shelf button uh, icon for it as well. It's got two modes here for the UI, compact and advanced. And the advanced just has a lot of extra stuff that you probably won't really typically use for most animation purposes. But I just put that stuff in there because I found you can you can actually do some kind of cool stuff with it. But I'm going to cover all that in a different video because it's not really relevant for just getting going with it. So I would just recommend to start off with that you just leave it in compact mode. The only options then you really have are the, the size, which is the kind of scale of how big the wave it creates. And then you've got these uh, rotation options here to select what axis. I have it defaulting to X because most of the rigs I tried rotate in X, but this rig doesn't. This rig, if I select the FK tail, I've got a script on my shelf there. It's like them. the axis for this one is actually Z. So I'm going to switch this to Z. One thing I should mention as well, it's important to select the controls in order. So if you're, say, selecting these FK controls, you would start from, from this one and then shift select this one and so on but as i say a script or you know a shelf button or a gui whatever way you want to do it is a lot quicker i don't know what size i want yet so i'm just going to do this kind of experiment i'm going to try an s curve and that's a little bit maybe a little bit too broad it's you know it'll depend on what you want to do so i'll just turn the size down a little bit and try it again and that's pretty good but i'm actually going to invert it i want to maybe just for demonstration purposes i want to maybe start off with the inverse of that so that's that's my my pose say i'm going to do like a 24 frame cycle so i'm going to just hit s on the first frame and then i'm going to key that again on 25 to get the exact same pose and i'm going to go halfway between them and I, that was the inverse s curve so so on halfway between them i want the s curve which is the exact opposite of that pose so now i've got this kind of thing and then in between them the simple way to remember it is whatever it's coming from that's what you want the c curve for from so in this case it's an inverse s curve so halfway between these i want the inverse c curve and then here it's coming from an s curve so halfway between them i want the c curve and that's it basically then i just you know hide my um my double frame i've got the same pose on frame one and 25 and that's it there's um a few things then with polishing that to make it really look good but that's uh, something again i'll cover in another video and that's that's the basics of it and um, you can do it in other axes as well. I would recommend working probably one at a time. Just I find it less confusing myself. You know, you can you can do the rotation Y. Um, and just to show as well, one thing that that you'll find is that you'll generally get nicer results. This is very typical with kind of tail rigs. The more controls you have, because you'll get sort of a, a nicer, cleaner shape. And that's why I chose this rig. It's a little bit of a slow rig to use, but it's a nice uh, rig to demo because it has, you see I'm getting a nice floppy motion there with, uh, with that tail because I've got like, I think it's like 15 controllers in that tail. This tail also has IK control. So I'm just gonna, for a quick demo, I'm gonna just show you the difference with that. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna delete those animation curves and reset those controllers. So now I'm back to default. So now I'm gonna select the IK tail and just to demo, I'll, do, I'll go into a top view and I'll use rotation y in this case so again i'll just maybe hit an s curve you'll notice with this one because it's less controllers i probably need to turn the size up a little bit to get a little bit more of a flow to the shape again this is a thing that you'll find that the more controllers you have the prettier the shape will get but this will certainly get you a good starting point anyway so that's the first one and i'm going to key it again at 25 and then in 13 i'm going to invert it and then the same thing this time i'm coming from an s curve so halfway between it i want the c curve and I'm coming from a C, inverse C curve, or sorry, inverse S curve. So now I want the inverse C curve. So it's basically just S curve, C curve, inverse S curve, C curve, and then back to S curve again. Uh, so that's that one. So that's giving me, you know, pretty nice clean shape. As I say, it's not quite as pretty. I'll just, just to demo it, I'll, I'll do it very quickly. Again, this is the nice thing about this tool is you can really um, experiment very quickly. So I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, FK curve, with the FK controls instead. And you'll see now I've got much bigger S here because of the, um, the amount of different controls. So I'm going to turn that size right down, maybe something like this. You can also click and drag in here if you hold control and get kind of smaller, more fine control. Or you can type in a value if you want to do something. 
but uh, I generally find you can also grab this and pull it out if you want to make the slider a little bit easier to, to get smaller values with. Um, so I'm going to say that's nice. So, uh, as, oops, I've changed that, of course. So say S curve there. It's important to keep the size the same while you're doing the four poses, actually. It's nothing I should mention. So I've got the S curve there, and then on 25, and then frame 13, inverse S curve, and then C curve. 19 inverse C curve so it's a little bit prettier again just because I've got more controls so it's a kind of a typical thing you know and uh, anytime you've got a cape or uh, you know floppy hair and like that to animate when you've got more controls it's a little bit more work but you will generally get prettier shapes um, and that's kind of the idea of this tool is just allow you to work very quickly with those kind of rigs even if they have a lot of controls you know because it would take a while to get that pretty kind of nice s shape this is using mats you know so it's kind of giving a nice clean shape and then you can certainly of course go into if i go into the graph editor and uh, look at the rotate y curves to show selected types say you know you can grab these in and offset them you know or move you know change them to suit the pose you what you want exactly but it gives you a very very quick starting point so i hope that helps and as i say keep an eye out i'm going to be doing more videos on some of this advanced stuff and also on how i would polish this just to make it look a little bit prettier uh, but i hope that helps cheers